If you guys enjoy what I do, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel and it's free and easy to do. Welcome to my channel where we cover the lore of Final Fantasy XIV. We cover the stories both big and small, the epic and the cute, the silly and the tragic. I hope you all enjoy the ride and welcome to the Chronicler of Lore. Since Soroban is out of control and there's no telling how long he'll stay that way, Genbu decides to join in on the fighting to help calm him down. For some reason, Tataru tries to help out too, and as soon as the fighting starts, her carbuncle runs away, so it's up to the Warrior of Light and Genbu to calm the out of control turtle down. The fact that the power that was hidden in Soroban was so great is nothing short of impressive, and after he finally turns back to normal, he doesn't even remember what he'd done, or why you all look so tired. Even though things didn't turn out exactly how he had expected, Genbu does feel like this little training session was a success since it showed that even though Soroban is weaker than Byako and even Genbu, given time and training, he could easily become their equals. They all started off pretty weak in the beginning anyway. Genbu had barely even become an auspice when he first met Tenzin. He had seen a vision of a terrible calamity where a lot of people would die, but since he was a tiny turtle there wasn't all that much he could do to stop it. Genbu had seen the future multiple times and had never had the power to do anything about it, but after living for over 500 years, he had saw a vision of a landslide that was going to destroy a village that wasn't far away. He decided that it was time for him to do something, so Genbu tried to warn the people. Unfortunately, he didn't speak the language of humans, so he couldn't communicate with them at all. Since there was nothing he could do, he decided to leave the village knowing that he'd have to watch another bad prediction come true. When he was leaving, Tenzin saw him and was actually able to understand him. He was traveling with Byako and the two of them started fighting in the middle of the village to make the people run off. The village got destroyed not long after that, but the people survived. It was the first time Genbu had managed to save anyone with his visions. After that, he joined Tenzin and Byako and they traveled around the world helping people. Thinking back on all of the dangers they had faced together makes Genbu really wish that Tenzin was there. But the Warrior of Light isn't a pushover, so having him there does make things a little better. Break time's over, so Genbu's ready to get back to training Soroban while Tataru heads back to Kugane. The Warrior of Light heads back to the Kojin City to let the Elder know what Soroban is up to. It doesn't take long for Genbu to send a letter telling you that you need to get back to the temple, so the Warrior of Light and Tataru both head back over there to see what's changed in your absence. From what Genbu says, Soroban's gotten a lot stronger since you left, but Genbu has him doing some special training at the moment that he says is better done in private, so you can't see him. That's not why he called you anyway. The wards on Koryu's prison have gotten even weaker, which means the four lords need to finish getting ready for the inevitable battle. So Genbu needs you to tame the feral side of another of his friends. The one he's talking about is Suzaku, the firebird. She shows up at the temple for the first time in a few hundred years, and she's not all that happy that Genbu called her there. She didn't know that Koryu was on the verge of breaking free, but now that she does, she assumes that means that the Warrior of Light is supposed to tame her feral side. Genbu tells her that you're the heir of Tenzin's legacy, and she gets offended by the fact that he compares someone like you to Tenzin. She's extremely fond of their fallen comrade, and since you are bold enough to say that you're his equal, she plans on killing you very painfully when you fail to measure up. Even Tataru notices that Suzaku seems a lot more angry than Byako had. But Genbu says it's because Aramatama feeds off of her grief over the loss of Tenzin, and that makes her more angry, but it's her story to tell. And she'll likely tell you all of it, if she doesn't burn you to death when you fight. The fact that you're brave enough to risk your life to fight her does get Suzaku to have a little more respect for you, but she still doesn't see you as fit to take up Tenzin's mantle. Byako understands partially how she feels, but Tenzin's dead, and if the Four Lords aren't brought back to their full power, Koryu will destroy the Ruby Sea, which will ruin Tenzin's legacy. The man died right before their eyes to prevent that from happening, and if Suzaku spends her time mourning the past while abandoning the present, she'll be dishonoring their friend's sacrifice. Byako's words do the opposite of making Suzaku see reason. She thinks that the Warrior of Light has started corrupting the others just because he has the same sin as Tenzin. She's very nearly been fully overtaken by our Aramatama, 
so there's not all that much time left before she'll reach the point of no return. So the Warrior of Light heads off to battle what may be the most powerful of the four lords. Suzaku takes on a true form and really tries to kill you. Not like the others hadn't tried hard before, but it's always something about the fire wielding enemies that really makes it seem like they want you dead. But the Warrior of Light beats her, getting her darker side under control, and after that she's much calmer than she had been. She apologizes for how disrespectful she was, and she thanks you for saving her from a fate far worse than death, as well as for freeing her mind so she could mourn Tenzin in the proper way. She clearly loved the man way more than a friend, and since she does have a human form, we'll just leave their relationship status up to the interpretation of the Twitter folks, who tend to create some somewhat disturbing art. Now that her mind's clear, Suzaku tells the Warrior of Light her story. She was born a very long time ago, and because of how she looked, people mistook her for the legendary bird Phoenix. And since the Phoenix was said to be able to make people immortal, she was hunted constantly. The only person who didn't treat her like a tool was Tenzin. She had joined him, Genbu, Byako, and Seryu, and the four lords and the samurai traveled around the realm together. People were afraid of them, but Tenzin still wanted to help people. Eventually, they started to praise them all for their good works. They dealt with any problems that came up, whether they were demons to kill or possess people to free. There was no job that they wouldn't take, and eventually a king called on them for their help. That was what led them to their fight with the insane auspice Koryu. While their group had taken down quite a few threats, they were still young as auspices go, and they were no match for Koryu. But Tenzin used all of his power to strike out at Koryu and seal him away, but that caused him to take a fatal blow. If Suzaku had actually been the legendary firebird, she could have saved Tenzin, but at the time she didn't have the powers. She got them later which was basically a slap in the face. But since she can't use those powers to save Tenzin, she can at least use them to save the people he died to protect. She's made a decision, so the two of you go back to let the others know that this mission was a success. The fact that you aren't dead lets everyone know that things must have turned out okay, and Suzaku's relaxed demeanor makes her much better to be around. Since that part's done, Genbu finally remembers that he needs to check on Soroban since he left him training alone. So he calls him and Soroban comes flying in. Once again he's changed. This time he's turned into a giant tortoise. He probably just said a word wrong in the ritual Genbu had him doing and accidentally gave his body to a turtle god. He doesn't want to stay like that, but Genbu doesn't know how long he'll actually be like that. If he's lucky, he'll turn back by the time you tame Seryu's dark side. But that will take a while since the Warrior of Light needs some rest. Since Soroban can't leave, he wants you to stop by his home and let the Elder know what's happened to him now. The Warrior of Light agrees and he heads off to relay the message and get a bit of sleep before he goes after the last of the four lords. And that's where we're going to stop for today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, ding that notification bell, and if you really want to show your support, you can donate to the channel through the link in the description. Until next time guys. Later.